We can rationalize some comparisons between fractions by understanding how the numerator and denominator relate to one, each, one another and even how sizes compare when we can just even mentally simplify them. So one of the things that we looked at for question number one, it says which is bigger, one-third or one-fourth? Both of them have the same numerator. They both have one part but there are fewer pieces required for one-third than there are for one-fourth. So the smaller the denominator, when the numerators are the same, the bigger the pieces. Um, if we, well, I don't have an example here. Uh, well, I'll do it down here. So if I have one here, and I break that into thirds, I have one versus one-fourth, the more pieces it takes to make the whole, the smaller each piece is. So when you pick the shape, the fraction with the smaller denominator, it means the piece is bigger than the piece of the other fraction. So that's why one-third is larger. Three-fourths versus three-eighths. Again, the numerator is the same. You have three parts but you only need four to make a whole rather than eight to make a whole. So each piece on the three-fourths is larger, so it's representing more. Two-fifths or one-fifth, when your denominators are the same, it means your pieces are the same size, and two is always gonna be more than one. Lastly, if we have one-fourth or two-thirds, if I think of one-fourth, that's only a quarter. Two-thirds is more than half because half of three is 1.5. So more than half is gonna be more than one quarter. So that's why two thirds is larger. If we looked at number two, it asked us to understand those rules from question number one and identify which ones were true. So there were three, actually all three of the statements were true, that when the numerators are the same, the fraction with the smaller denominator is greater, when the denominators are the same, the one with the larger numerator is greater, and the fewer pieces needed to make a whole, the more each piece is worth. So I guess actually the only one that wasn't true was you can only compare fractions when they have the same denominator. Not true, as you saw, we could rationalize about the proportions with the values given. If we looked at um, number uh, two, oh, that was number two. Uh, so questions three and on is asking us to compare our fractions and not actually need to do any calculating. So we didn't need to worry about creating equivalent fractions, we can just use um, logical critical thinking skills to deduce which one is greater. So if I start with four fifths versus 13 half of 13 twelfths, well, four fifths means it's less than a whole, 13 twelfths means it's more than a whole. So I would say 13 twelfths is greater, and the explanation a whole, 13 twelfths is more than a whole, which is always more than less than a whole. Didn't even need to do any calculating. Five sixths versus nine tenths. Well, based on the earlier lessons, we learned that um, the, the smaller the denominator, the bigger the pieces. So each one of these is only one off from being a whole amount. But five sixths, it takes fewer pieces to make a whole, so that means each piece is worth more. So by missing one of those, I'm missing more than one from here, nine tenths. So because um, that's just going to be a sliver shy versus, you know, if I had it a circle into six pieces and I'm missing one of those, that piece is larger than just missing one of these guys. Much, much different. So you can logically understand when the difference is only one from each, the bigger denominator actually means it's worth more because each piece means less is missing. Here we have 17 eighths versus 17 tenths. The numerators are the same. The denominators are different. This takes less to make a whole than the 10 pieces do. So that means if I think of that, well, eight out of 17 I have two whole pieces here. 10 out of 17 is only one whole piece and then a partial one. So two whole is greater than one whole, okay? 
If I have one third versus three twelfths, I can look at the three twelfths and think, I might think, oh, that's greater. But I can simplify three twelfths to one fourth. Because if I divide three out of both of those, I get one fourth. Which is more, one third or one quarter? One third is going to be greater. So my explanation would be when three twelfths is simplified, it's one fourth, which is less than one third. Six fourths versus eleven eighths, there's a lot of pieces there. Our minds might jump to that being greater. But if I think of six out of four, if I took the four out of six, that would give me one whole, and I'd let, be left with two out of four. Well, two out of four is half. So this is one and a half. Half of eight would be four. So I would need eight plus four to be the same as that. Well, 11 is less than that 12, which would be one and a half. So 11 is less than one and a half. Six fourths is one and a half. And then our last one is four thirds versus 14 twelfths, okay? So I know that when I take the three out of the four, I'm left with one and one third. When I take the one out of the four, or 12 out of the 14, I take one out and I'm left with two. So then two twelfths can be reduced to one sixth. Well, which is worth more, one third or one sixth? One third is worth more than one sixth. So there's our logical reasoning for why one fraction is greater than the other.